like Chapter 1, Chapter 2 presents material you learned in Chem 2030. This presentation briefly reviews the material in Chapter 2 and quickly moves to applications. The first thing we are going to look at is the macroscopic classification of matter. This is the bulk that we are used to dealing with. Everything we can physically see and work with around us. Matter is divided into mixtures and pure substances. Looking at mixtures, mixtures contain more than one chemical entity. Mixtures are divided into heterogeneous and homogeneous categories. Heterogeneous mixtures may be separated through physical means. For example, if you leave milk on the counter, the proteins will coagulate and separate from the aqueous component. Blood does the same thing. If you look closely at rocks, concrete, and dirt, the different components are visible to the eye. Homogeneous mixtures are mixed at the molecular level. No matter how small a quantity you take, it will always contain chemical entities in the same proportion as the bulk. Air, gasoline, and coffee are some examples. Apple juice is a homogeneous mixture, but orange juice with pulp is a heterogeneous mixture. Now looking at pure substances, these contain only one chemical entity. Elements are comprised of only one type of atom, and compounds are comprised of different atoms bonded together. Another classification of matter is the microscopic classification. The term molecular entity is used to represent anything at the microscopic level. I commonly use this term, or simply, entity. Atoms are physically composed of only one entity. Molecules are composed of more than one atom bonded together. Both atoms and molecules are not charged. Ions are any molecular entity that has a charge. They could be atomic ions, like sodium ions and chloride ions, or they could be polyatomic ions, like ammonium and nitrate ions. In this course, we are more focused on understanding individual entities, so we'll be working predominantly with the microscopic classification of matter. We start by looking at atoms, then build molecules from the atoms, and finally look at the reactions of the atoms and molecules. The Bohr model proposes that the atom is comprised of neutrons and protons in a core nucleus, with electrons existing with discrete energies surrounding the nucleus. We know that the electrons exist with discrete energies because transitions between these electronic energy levels occurs at specific wavelengths. This is illustrated by the emission spectra of helium, neon, and krypton shown here. If electrons could have any energy, every atom and molecule would emit the entire electromagnetic spectrum. However, this is not the case. It is beyond the scope of this course, but one aspect of physical chemistry is the analysis of these emissions to determine an, and develop an understanding of the energy levels within molecular entities.